Thank you for tuning in to the Bethel Temple Faith Church broadcast. We appreciate your viewership and we're confident that there's a word of God for you today. Now with today's message, our pastor and founder, Pastor Bertram D. Hinton Jr. For your love for us, for your goodness toward us, yes. even for your mercies that are shown within our lives. We pray forgiveness of any sin that we may have committed tonight, things that we may have said, done, or thought outside of your will, God. We just ask you to purge us from those. Even tonight, God, we pray that you would just meet us here in the building. For your word promise us that we're Jesus. two or three gathered together in your name. There you are in the midst of them. You, so tonight we thank you that we've met the prerequisite for your presence. Amen. We're here, God, gathered with one accord and in the name of Jesus. And because of that, we know that your presence will be here among us. Bless those that press their way out to pray tonight. Thank you for prayers of the righteous availing much even on this evening. For those that press their way just to be here on yes. time for Bible study. Bless them and even those that are yes. yet on their way, God, we pray that you would grant them traveling mercy and direction and grace Jesus. to get here safely and without a hitch. God, we pray now even for the dispensation of your word, God, that as you release your word tonight, it would be done so with clarity. It would be done so with precision. It would be done so with accuracy that the people of God would leave encouraged, yes. would leave motivated and leave with confidence you, Jesus. knowing what you expect of us. So God, we pray now that you would take control of these moments, that you would take bless control, them. Father. God, uh, any distraction, we already come against it and the de declare that it is powerless tonight. Uh, over us, God, because we're walking in your authority. Now, God, just magnify yourself. Make your name big in the teaching tonight. Oh, yes. And you would get glory and honor. We thank you for doing it. In Jesus' Jesus. name, amen. 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 And amen. amen. Tonight, um, with the help of the Holy Ghost, we're going to teach out of uh, one. I'll give you one area where we'll start, and that's going to be out of John, the 17th chapter. Uh, we do a little bit of cross-referencing and sharing from uh, an Old Testament story as well, just to bring relevance to the text. It's always good to be able to connect or to marry the testaments that something said in the new can be reflective in the old, and something said in the old can be reflective in the new. So tonight, we'll start with uh, the New Testament side of things, and that being John, 17th chapter. We're going to look at a few verses out of John chapter 17, verses 13 through 20, is where we'll be tonight. Mm -hmm. And I'll read these verses, I'll give you my title, and then we will proceed with the lesson for this evening. John chapter 17, uh, starting at verse number 13. If you have John 17, 13, would you acknowledge by saying amen? Amen. Amen. Verse what reads on this wise in John 17. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world have hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy word. Excuse me, think, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. For their sakes I sanctify, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. 20 is where I'll stop. Jesus says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Tonight I want to talk to us about the seriousness of sanctification. I just want to talk about tonight the seriousness of sanctification. The seriousness of sanctification. Yes, sir. Now, uh, I, I can't necessarily say or uh, put a lot of weight on those that may not be uh, under my care as it relates to me serving as their pastor. Uh, I can't speak about what other houses do or what other houses believe, but God has given me a mandate, uh, Brother Butler, for mm. this house uh, to make sure that I teach us the right way. Yes, sir. It's not uh, on pastor to live it for you. 
It's not on pastor to uh, run down behind you and put a microscope over your personal life. Yes, but it's my responsibility <laughs> to simply teach you what the word of the Lord is and how we are to operate under his word. Yes, sir. Now, the, the reality, Dr. Butler, of this hour that we live in is we live in a time, Deacon Moss, where literally any and everything goes. Uh, standard is almost a profane word in 2019 because people do what they do, how they do it, when they do it, and with whom they desire to do it with. And if you don't agree with who they decide to do it with, they just go talk about you until they can find somebody to agree with who they want to do it with. Wow. We're living in a time where the principles of sanctification really are not mandatory as some people think in the body of Christ. I've got news for you. Sanctification is still mandatory That's in this house. Right. Now, you know, Sister Joseph, I, I, I get new folks to come in, and, you know, by, by the grace of God, for four years I've been teaching on this, this same vein. But, you know, new <laughs> folks come in, Sister Joseph, and, uh, you know, I want to make sure that the new members understand, even though they got a cool pastor, they still got a sanctified pastor. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. He, he can ride roller coasters, and he can high-five you. He can tell a couple of funnies, but he's still living for Jesus. Yes, sir. Right. And if the preacher is living for Jesus, yes, sir. the expectation is that the people this live for good. Jesus, too. Right. This is good. Now, what I'm finding in life, not, not just Bethel Temple Faith Church, but in life, is that there are a lot of people who are saved, mm -hmm. but not really sanctified. Mm. They, they they go into heaven and they're glad about it, but, but they're not really worried about living too much down here on earth. They, they feel as though if I've given Jesus my heart, but I still give myself my life, then, you know, uh, I can live the best of both worlds. I, I can live how I want to live in the earth because I understand that heaven is my home. But the reality is, people of God, it doesn't work that way. That's right. That's right. With Salvation always comes the need for sanctification. Now, salvation is freely given, which means, so Jackson, when I give my heart to God, I come to God, I'm broken, I'm humble, I'm, I'm tired of how I was or how I am. I come to God and I say, I want to let Jesus into my heart. At that moment, I'm saved. Period. Salvation is done. But life doesn't stop just because, man of God, you gave God your heart. Come on, sir. Guess what? Yes. It usually gets more difficult. <laughs> because now Truth. there is a noted enemy that you're going to have to face every day. Yes. That before I made this confession, even though the devil wasn't on my side, at least he did not like me as much. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, catch that next week. <laughs> even though when I was living for the devil, he still didn't like me. He just didn't like me as much now that I'm living for God. Mm. So when I accept Jesus... I now receive not only a gift or promise of eternal life, but I also receive the promise of a temporary enemy. Oh, that every day I wake up, there's already somebody that's against me. Mm. Every moment that I'm fighting or living this life, there's going to be force that comes against me. How then, brother preacher, do uh -huh. I live the life for Jesus if you're telling me I have a continual enemy? Mm. This is where sanctification comes yes, in. Yes, sir. Sanctification tonight is composed of a couple of elements that I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, let me give you the elements and then I'll give you the definition. This is what I'm going to talk about tonight with the series of sanctification. The first thing I'm going to get, get us to understand tonight is that in sanctification, with sanctification comes an enablement. I'm just going to give you my points, then I'm going to come and give you the definition and break them down. Not only with sanctification comes an enablement, but the next part of sanctification after enablement is purification. And the final thing we're going to talk about tonight is the element of growth connected to it. So sanctification comes in three parts that we're going to talk about tonight. Enablement, purification, and growth. We're going to talk about those three areas tonight. Enablement, purification, and growth. The word sanctification by Miriam Webster. Listen to the definition of this, Sister Coop. Sanctification is the state of being made free from sin. 
sanctification. The state of being made free from sin. The state of being made free from sin. Not only the sanctification defined, is defined in that regard, Webster goes a step further to say the sanctification is also the state of growing in divine grace, the state of growing in divine grace as a result of Christian commitment and conversion. Again, the state of growing in divine grace as a result of Christian commitment after, let's use that, after conversion. Okay? So again, sanctification. Merriam-Webster defines the state of being made free from sin. That was the first definition. Second definition, the state of growing in divine grace as a result of Christian commitment after conversion. So what I understand primarily, Minister Lipscomb, is I can't become sanctified until after I know I'm saved. Okay. Because we, 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 we've grown up in an environment that wants to preach sanctification, which is a good thing to preach. But I think we, we missed the, mat, the, the, the major point is before I can be sanctified, I first got to be saved. Which means there first has to be not just a change connected to what I've said, but now a change connected to how I'm living. Mm. Let me help us tonight. Sanctification. Okay, I, I give uh, salvation. I give this often. I've given this over the last four years. Sanctification is a Greek word called homologio. Okay, homologio in the Greek, simply a compound Greek word, homo logos. Homo, we understand to mean the same as. Okay, the same as, the same as. And uh, we identify that uh, logo simply means the word or Christ. All right. So homo logos, uh, salvation connected to that is simply being the same as the word. I've got to be the same as Jesus. That makes me saved. If my life doesn't look like Jesus, I ain't talking about you being the perfect side of Jesus. I'm just talking about you being the man of Jesus. If my life doesn't look like the man Jesus, then maybe I'm not really saved. Okay. That doesn't mean that I've reached perfection yet, because that's where sanctification comes in. But what my life looking like Jesus means, at least the way I approach people shouldn't be the way I approach them before I met. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, let me go and lay a Lord. At least uh, salvation should mean that the way I talked to people, mm -hmm. I don't talk to them the same way after I met Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lay a Lord. Okay, salvation can also mean the way I behaved around people doesn't look the same after I've met Jesus. Yes. There has to be a noted difference, and not just in the fact that you now wear a suit and not just some slacks, but there has to be a noted difference in how you approach life. Yes, sir. That's salvation. It's not just because I'm saying, Brother Joseph, that I'm saved, but there has to be a noted difference. Minister West talked about a noticeable change, a noticeable mm -hmm. difference. There has to be something about you that is different after I've come in contact with Jesus if he really stuck with me when I met him. Right. Mm -hmm. That's good. Right. That's just like somebody, you know, I used to use this as an example, uh, and I mean, I guess it's still bad here, but 7-Eleven in Virginia, man, it really used to be the worst um, as it relates to the smell. You you just know you've been oh in 7-Eleven. When you walk in 7-Eleven, especially anywhere in Hampton Roads, oh God from Zion, oh you my. walk in 7-Eleven, as soon as you walk out, people know, oh, you've been in 7-Eleven. You ain't got to say nothing, but they smell it on you. Mm. You carry the fragrance of where you were yes, when you left out of that presence. Mm. So if I really got Jesus in my life, I should smell different. I should carry a fragrance on me ahead, that people should be able to know I've been in his presence. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. All right. So, 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 so the sanctification process uh, is, it, it is a process. It's the state of being made free from sin. So when I'm becoming <laughs> sanctified, when I'm becoming purified, there will then be noticeable differences in my life. There would be no difference. So what does that mean? Again, when I'm walking, Sister Micaiah, the path of sanctification, that means I have to start changing some stuff about who I used to be. Help me tonight, Jesus. I can't still be in the world and in God. Okay. I got to make a choice. That's it right sanctification there. is the beginning of my choice. He told me that sanctification comes with enablement, which means I already have in me, when I met Jesus, 
I have in me now the ability to do better. Yes, sir. Mm. That don't mean I'm going to cross the T every time. Yes, that don't mean I'm going to dot the I every time. But more times than not, mm. I'm going to cross and dot. Yes. Mm. Thank you for a yes, and that's it, and the oomph. Because the reality <laughs> is, when I'm going through a process of sanctification, I'm acknowledging that in order for me to have wanted to get saved, there had to be some stuff about me that I didn't like. That's yeah. good. Because if I like everything about me, why change anything about who I am? Yeah, that's right. I come to Jesus because I recognize there are some parts of me that I don't like. Well, after I come to him, what I got to do is keep those things before him so he can take them away from me. Oh, God. I'm not going to ask your permission, Deacon Evans, but you consider I am. So Deacon Evans, uh, you know, he, he, he got a lot of things going on with his life. God bless him. He's a wonderful man of God. He got plenty of money. He fly all over the country whenever he want to. So he's involved in these uh, fantasy football. He got a couple fantasy football drafts and things he's connected to. And the man of God shared with me, and his wife shared some, some more with me, connected to some of the things he was facing. Now, 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 years passed, Sister Coop, you know, he would go to the fantasy football draft as as bro Evans, he, now nah, he probably go as Derek. Okay, uh, he, he would go to, to the fantasy draft as Derek, and, 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 and Derek, you know, was accustomed or all right with being in certain environments that might have had certain things happening that not necessarily becoming to the Christian he was becoming. <laughs> now uh, he, he he says, well, you know, these are my guys. A number of years we've been together. These are my boys. These are my friends. I'm gonna still connect with them in the draft. And I'm going to go and be participatory with them in the weekend. But I know now I'm not going as Derek. Mm -hmm. I'm going as Deacon Evans. Yes, sir. Right. Now, 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 somebody slipped up and, and, and called Deacon Evans thinking they were talking to Derek. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were telling Deacon Evans about mm -hmm. some activities that were supposed to take place the night prior to the draft. Oh, yeah. Not understanding they were talking to the deacon. Yes, the deacon said, oh, you got me confused. You think this still Derek. <laughs> oh. No, Deacon Evans can't participate in that. Yeah, there you go. So, so I'm going to hold off, even though my flight is supposed to come in Friday. What y'all going to be doing Friday night is not conducive to the man I'm becoming. Yes, sir. So I've got to make a choice in my process of sanctification. Choice. Do I go just off the strength of these are my boys and they're going to know who I am? Or do I understand that there's still a, a, a man in me? That can challenge me if I put him in the wrong position. Y'all yeah. don't want to talk back to your boy that's tonight. Real. Make it, that, that's why we fall, Cooper, because a lot of times we don't let the man in us talk. Yeah. You, you don't let the woman in you talk. What does that mean? You know what your weakness is. Oh, right. That's right. Talk about I'm saved and say, you ain't that sanctified. That's right. that's right. It's still a one out there that can catch you. Yes, uh oh. So the man of God says, <laughs> Yes, sir. Derek might have gone. Yeah. But the deacon will change his flight yes, before he finds himself tempting the Derrick in him. So, 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 so he, 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 he shuts down the Friday night. There's already a measure of them feeling some kind of way who this guy think he is. Maybe they forgot just last year we partook in the same activity. Why he acting funny now? He comes in Saturday with the desire to say, I'm not coming in to even be invasive on what you do. I just want you to understand that in my process of sanctification, I can't engage with what yeah. you do. Now, I'll connect with you. We'll draft. I'll be in the league. I'll do the things that I do as being your boy. But when it comes down to the activities that you're participating in, don't sit in that my way. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so the deacon, as he's there, he's fighting through what he's fighting through. Once the assignment of the draft is over, the deacon's mindset changes. I got to get out of here because this is not conducive to what I'm trying to become. Teaching on sanctification. So this man of God says, I'm going to figure out how, even if it costs me some more money, it would cost me to be inconvenienced. I'm going to figure out how to get out of here because I don't want Derek to be tempted because the deacon thought he was too strong. Yeah. Mm. That's good. That's good. Yes, sir. And the deacon, as he runs to the airport, literally, uh, he calls his wife. Oh, yeah, preacher. And he says, Deaconess, I made it out. Y'all should clap. Yes, yeah, awesome. <laughs> Understanding that his process of sanctification means I have to be willing to do things differently now that I'm trying to become this man in God. Yes, sir. Now, here's my thing, bro, Kanye. If you don't want to become nothing in God, don't get sanctified. Yeah. If you're content 
with just being, you know, I'm the person that'll come to church and church starts at 1045, I'll get to 1115, I'll listen to the preacher from 1150 to 1158, and then, you know, he probably a little long, eight minutes was about the most I could stomach because he's going to start talking about some stuff that's in my business, so I just leave. If you content with being that kind of Christian, maybe this isn't your church. Yeah, well, true. Yes, sir. True. Because you got the kind of pastor that I want to see everybody grow yes, in their sanctification. Yes, sir. <laughs> if you were a cusser when you became a member, my prayer is in a process of time, you're no longer a cusser. That's right. That's sanctification. Yes, sir. If you were a weed head when you got to the church, my prayer is that at least you're not a weed head six months from now. Yes, sir. That's there ought to be some measure of sanctification that makes the we, the Mary Jane, the John Blaze, the ugly earth, that makes it not as attractive ahead, after I've been under the word. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> sanctification. It means that I'm willing, Sister Tiana, to at least start my process of being better than yes. what I was yes. before I came to God. Amen. Here's the thing. If we're going to be the body of Christ, and I'm going to get deeper into the, this scripture, so don't push me too fast. If we're going to be the body of Christ, how can we be the body of Christ, <laughs> but we don't set an example right. for those who are not in the body? That's a good preacher. What makes church attractive if the people sitting on your pew was in the same strip joint as you last weekend? Go ahead. What makes them want to do anything different if you still doing what they doing and you sing on the praise team? Mm. There has to be, Wells, a standard. Sanctification feels is the standard of this house. Yes, yes sir. Amen. Tell me, say it, Pastor. Amen. Say it. Thank you. This is the season of Bethel Temple Faith Church. Mm -hmm. yes. That Pastor Hinton going to start sitting you down when I know you're not trying to be sanctified. Yes. Yes. Let it be a clarion call today. Yes, sir. Text whoever you need to text. Tell him watch the Facebook. Pass it and bump his head again. He going to go crazy on us. He going to be his own praise team. Mm. If you're not walking towards living something, you're not going to serve in Bethel Temple Faith Church. Yeah. And this might not be for everybody. Amen. I don't expect too many likes on this post. I don't expect too many people to continue to watch. They probably turned it off right now. But what I understand yeah. is in this house, yeah. can't speak for nobody else's church, but in my church, yes, oh God, if I know. You're not trying to walk toward. I ain't saying you got to be perfect. But I got to see you walking towards something beyond what you were when you first got saved. Come on. We got folks in the church that's going backwards, black. I said, my God, am I teaching anything around here? Sanctification. There has to be an understanding, y'all. That we've already been made free from the sin that you're still practicing. You already been made free from it. That's like a man who's been in prison to get out and then go back and say, put me back in the cell. You would be a dummy. I mean, you would be idiotic. Yes, sir. You didn't got set free and you go back to the same place you just got out of. Hey, man, put me back in there. I ain't learned my lesson. Sanctification. All right. So the word sanctification in Greek is uh, hagiosmos. Hagiosmos is H-A-G-I-A-S-M-O-S. H-A-G-I-A-S-M-O-S. Hagiosmos. Hagiosmos. It simply means the state of purity. It is holiness or a separation as unto God. Simply put, this sanctification. Hagiosmos. Hagiosmos. Purification. A state of purity. <laughs> holiness or separation as unto God. Now, here, here's what, here's what the, the, the commentary 
uh, stated, connected to this Hebrew uh, or this Greek definition. It says that uh, sanctification is not just the activity of the Holy Spirit in setting us apart unto salvation and transferring us into the ranks of the redeemed, but it is the enablement for us to be holy even as God himself is holy. Mm. I'll give it to you again. He says, and you don't you can shorthand this. He just says sanctification, hagiosmos, hagi, yeah, hagiosmos. It means again, not just the activity of the Holy Spirit in setting us apart unto salvation and transferring us to the ranks of the redeemed, but it is the enablement for us to be holy, even as God is holy. So sanctification comes not just to encourage me that I'm saved or to remind me that I've already been redeemed, but sanctification is the process in my life to help me understand that the same way God is holy, I can be holy too. Yes, sanctification puts me on the path to holiness, which means I've got to be willing to understand the enablement. Okay, here's, here's the teaching. Enablement is, uh, is defined as this. To provide with the means or power to do something. That's all enablement is. To provide with the means or power to do something. So God tells us, even through Jesus, in his teaching, Jesus is saying here, God, I understand, I'm writing to the disciples that are in front of me, and the 20th verse tells me he's writing to us that will believe on the disciples' word. He says, I understand that they're going to have issues in their life. I understand that the world is not going to like them. People are going to be against them. He says, but I need you to sanctify them through your truth, your truth being the word of God. So what I understand is that the word of God is the only thing that can sanctify me. Sanctification comes when I'm willing to put time and energy into his word, whether that be reading his word on my own, whether that be sitting under the word from my leader, whether that be connected to a reading plan I may have, sanctification, my process of change, starts by my connection to the word. We quote this scripture often in 2 Corinthians 4 and 7, and I'm going to continue to quote it because it's a powerful scripture. Paul writes, he says, For we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So the enablement that we're looking for, 2 Corinthians 4 and 7, is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not going to get too deep on that tonight because that will take up the next hour of my time. But upon your salvation, your true moment of confession of salvation, you receive at that time the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. You got him the day you gave your heart to Jesus. You got him. So the enablement, the enabling force is already working inside of me. Therefore, if enablement is already working inside of me, preacher, why am I still falling into certain sins? Thank you for asking me, even though you didn't, I'll ask on your behalf. The reason we continue to fall, even though the enablement is inside of us, is because we are not willing to yield to the enabler. You got to yield. You got to give up your rights to the Holy Ghost. You know, my mom said this. She was talking, and she, she was dealing with some things connected to uh, the, the ending of her, her, one of her sister's lives. Uh, she was getting ready to transition uh, out, of, out of this world into the next. And she and, and my, my cousin were really involved in a lot of the caregiving aspects of it. And, and sometimes, you know, my cousin, and this isn't to put anybody out there, it's just the truth, my cousin would be angry uh, at what the process was looking like and at times would use profanity. Mm -hmm. Now, my mom, in, in, in one of the conversations she was sharing with me, she says, I had to share with your cousin this, that just because I'm saved, listen to this, just because I'm saved doesn't mean I forgot how to cuss. Mm -hmm. That's right. Walk with me on this. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm saved doesn't mean I don't know how to cuss. That's right. But because I'm saved, I make a decision to yield to what's inside of me yes, and not say what, what's the, what wants to come out of me. Yes, sir. So sanctification is not a magic wand, Sister Coop, that all of your challenges go away. That's right. Sanctification is just a reminder that the enablement to still do right is in you. Wow. You just got to yield to it. 
help me today, God. I know I'm teaching real good. This is TBN worthy. The, the reality we're still messing up a lot is because we're choosing to ignore the enabler. Help me today, Jesus. When the Lord is telling you not to say it, you telling the Lord, I want to say it, so I'm going to say it anyway. Because he's going to always tell you not to say it. He's going to even put an alternative word in your mouth. But because I choose not to yield, I'm going to say what I want to say instead of what he's telling me to say. Yes, Nicky Fisher? Hey. That just made me think. Every time you're about to do wrong, you get the Holy Ghost telling you, don't do it. He does. He does. You do. You choose not to. We put him on mute because what he's saying doesn't match how I feel. And it's going to make me feel better, at least in a temporary moment, to tell this person several four-letter words than it is for me just to walk away from them. You got to feed him. Absolutely. And, and that, but that's exactly what Jesus said. I've got to be sanctified. I've got to fuel the Holy Spirit in me by taking in the word. I have to keep this word before me. Yes, sir. If I want to talk like him, I got to keep him before me. That's right. oh, God. So, so he says we have to learn how to yield to what's inside of us and understand that we have we now have a change in citizenship. Jesus. He says, Jesus says in John 17, he says, I got a newsflash for you. You're not of the world no more. That's right. So because you're not of the world, you can't keep responding the way the world would respond. Right. Help me today, Jesus. My issue with the church, the people of God, the saints, <laughs> is that we got too many worldly responses to godly issues. Ooh. Preacher, what are you telling me? Give me an example. Oh, thank you. I will. You gave me a softball to hit it. I'm going to hit it out the park. When you are connected to a marriage, somebody say marriage. Marriage, marriage is something that God instituted, which means in order for me to handle a God institution, I can't present worldly answers to a God institution. So when the world tells me, girl, you ought to leave them alone, God tells me cleave to them. So if I'm not feeding my God me enough, the leave him alone me is going to start speaking louder than what the Holy Ghost is trying to tell you to fight through it. You got your own counsel within you if you learn how to shut you up long enough to listen to what God wants to say. But we got so many reality solutions to all these problems. We got so many housewife solutions to godly problems. Help me, Holy Ghost. I don't have no help. I help myself. I got you. We got so many little people answers to the godly problem. You can't fix godly stuff using worldly techniques. You don't believe me? Let me give you some scripture. The Bible says this. Write the scripture down. 1 John chapter 2, 15 through 17. 1 John chapter 2. Not St. John, but 1 John. But the back of the Bible. Jesus, through John, the, the apostle, writes this. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. 16 says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. 17 says, and the world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. <laughs> Preacher, what are you trying to tell me? When I understand that I no longer am of the world, I'll stop trying to handle people like how I used to handle them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ain't no cussing in the Christian kingdom. So when I'm still using those words, what I'm doing is I'm taking a worldly approach to handle a godly issue. And it's going to remain a mismatch and an imbalance and you're going to continue to fail because you can't fix God problems with worldly answers. The word God says that faith comes by hearing, right? The hearing of the word of God. Yes. But the faith comes by hearing and whatever we hear, that's what we have faith for, Right. Kanye used last week, he said, evil communication corrupts good, good manners. manners. It's not just what we're saying, but it's also what we hear. That's what I'm taking so in. So that can also corrupt our good manners. Yes, it sir. will, every time. So it's cool. What was that chapter you said? 
First John, first John chapter two, verses 15 through 17. First John chapter two, verse 15. So he says, you've got to understand, in order for the enablement that's in you to kick in, you've got to understand that you've changed citizenship. You're no longer just a citizen of this world. You're a citizen of the kingdom. And as a citizen of the kingdom, I have to respond with a kingdom answer. Mm -hmm. I can't bring this worldly stuff into the things of the kingdom. Jesus gives us to understand there must be, if I'm going to have enablement working in me, there must be a surrender of the old me. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians. All I got is scripture, so forgive me. 2 Corinthians, 15, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, he says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What I understand about that verse is, even when I get saved and the old me dies, mm -hmm. he still is in me. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. that's right. So even though he's dead, he still has the ability <laughs> to be resurrected <laughs> when I continue to feed him yeah. all oh, things. That's good. I can't expect to answer differently if all I do is listen to my old environment. Right, that's right. I said this once before, you know, the, the colloquialism goes, you can take the person out of the hood. Y'all said the rest. So, so if that's the case, if I don't understand that the old me, even though it's dead, can still resurrect, if I continue to feed it old food, it's going to start reliving old life. Mm -hmm. And old life is going to try to invade my new man. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to walk around confused about the God I'm really serving because the old me is still trying to work in my new body. Wow. God help me today. So Sister Coop, when I don't learn how to sever the tie, you spoke this yourself, though. <laughs> when I don't learn how to sever what I used to be connected to, the old me that's even though it's dead, it still can remind me of how it felt. Yes. That's right. That's right. And if I feed into how it felt too long, I can really mess myself up. Talking about the seriousness of sanctification. So, so we're talking about, we see the enablement that God gives us through his precious Holy Spirit that upon salvation, when I've confessed Jesus with my mouth and believed in my heart that God had raised him from the dead, at that moment my salvation occurs. I receive the gift of the Holy Ghost now. Of course, we know we still need to be filled with him. There needs to be a pouring in. You know, that's another lesson for another day. But I have the enabler living on the inside of me that can walk with me. Now, when I I have the enabler inside of me. I must yield to him. Well, there's a story in Numbers, uh, the 20th chapter. I told you we'll talk about a little bit of Old Testament connected with the new tonight. Uh, there's a story in Numbers, the 20th chapter, that gives us a backdrop for how serious God takes sanctification. That's all I'm talking about tonight is the seriousness of sanctification. In the story in Numbers, the 20th chapter, we identify that there is a character or a man in here by the name of Moses, okay? Uh, Moses, uh, Deaconess Evans, is in fact the leader of the people of Israel. God has made promise to the Israelites that he's going to bring them into the promised land, and Moses is going to be the guy to get it done. Now, Moses received this commission from God when he was 80 years old. Well, in Numbers, the 20th chapter, we see Moses now at 120 years old. This is 40 years into what he's been doing with the children of Israel in the wilderness. The Bible says in the 20th chapter of the book of Numbers that uh, first we find in Graham that Miriam has now died. Okay, uh, Miriam, the sister of Moses and Aaron, uh, one of the leaders amongst the children of Israel, the scripture says she dies. And after she dies in verse 1 and verse 2, the Bible says the people started complaining. They began to complain and say, for 40 years, man, you didn't have us out here in this wilderness. You keep telling us about this promised land. Uh, we didn't went. And, you know, our guys made report. We already know it's giants in the land. We ain't going to be able to take it. We all messed up. We all over the place. Why don't you just let us go back to Egypt? Mm -hmm. Moses is hearing all of this. Evangelist Graham, he's taking it in. He's doing the best he can to be a good pastor. He's trying to pray 
Uh, he's trying to talk to God on their behalf, but he's really just got fed up. It's 40 years, elder, he's been dealing with these people. He didn't ordain some elders, and they not even helping him. Uh, they, you know, everybody didn't turn them. Even the elders want to turn on him. And so he says, I don't have nobody, but it's just me. Aaron is all over the place because he let y'all create foreign gods in the wilderness. I don't have no help. None of my members are with me. I'm standing all alone. God, what am I supposed to do? God tells Moses, bring your rod, you and Aaron. I want you to come before my presence. He says, put the rod before my presence, and I'm going to tell you how to handle this issue. God says, y'all heard me teach this before. God says to Moses, Moses, what I want you to do is I want you to take the rod in your hand, but go before the rod, and I want you to speak to the rock. Mm -hmm. I want you to say to the rock, command the rock to bring forth water that these people can have provision. He says, now, Moses, just, just do that. Take the rod with you, but go speak to the rock. And you're going to see my hand move. Moses says, cool. He comes back. But when he comes back, the people still talking slick a little bit. So he in his feelings for real. Just came out of the presence of God. But these people, they really ticked me off one more time. I just can't do it no more. Moses says, listen, what do y'all expect me to be? I'm tired of you complaining. I'm sick of you and your children. I'm sick of all of you. I'm just over it and I'm over you. And the Bible says he took the rod. And he hit the rock twice. Mm -hmm. Out of the rock, begin to spew water. Yeah. So the people, Kanye, are rejoicing because it's like, I'll take my lashing, but I still got what I was complaining about. So I'm cool. Moses, you can go sit down. I don't care. You mad? You gave me what I was looking for. So, so they're enjoying the water, but God has to come talk to Moses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And God says to Moses, Moses, I need you to understand something. Because you refuse to sanctify me, because you refuse to set the right example in front of the children of Israel, I can't let you take them into the promised land. Preach, what are you trying to tell me? There is a punishment, help me today, connected with my willingness to ignore sanctification. Thank you, Lipscomb. Uh, there, there is a price I'm going to have to pay by my willingness to live life my own way as God's man. Mm. Oh, I don't Jesus. So when I think I'm getting away because God didn't necessarily strike me down at that moment, God says, I need you to understand that there is a price that has to be paid connecting to your willingness or your unwillingness to not go through your process wow. of sanctification. What does that mean? That means just like in life, Raylan can't stay a baby for the next 16 years. That's right. There's a real problem if 16 years from now, he's still sitting in his grandmama lap sucking on a bottle. Yes, sir. It's an issue. Yes. It's, a problem. it's an issue. If I see Caleb come go sit in his mama lap, tell him I need a bottle, I'm going to whip him even if his daddy don't. Yes, sir. <laughs> because there's a problem. His growth was stunted mm -hmm. along the way. Yes, right. God says, even with us, how long are we going to use the excuse of, I just got saved? Mm -hmm. There's an expectation that the way you prayed now I lay me down to sleep mm -hmm. should now start to translate into, Father, in the name of Jesus, yeah. I come to you as humble as I know how. Yeah. If there's not a progression, then there's no process, which means there's been no <laughs> sanctification. Mm. Right. Yes, God. You all right? Get to me. I do. So I'm, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you two 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 different things. Paul he writes to the, the, the church of Corinth. He says, you know, I want to feed you with meat, but because you're still a baby, I can't even give. You, I gotta feed you. I gotta give you milk because you ain't ready to digest and eat the things that I got for you. So yes, Paul in his frustration says, how long are you gonna be on the bottle? Mm -hmm. mm. You're 30 years old drinking a bottle. That's a problem. If I see a 30-year-old man drinking a bottle, I'm going to beat him too. Because that's a problem, Butler. Problem. <laughs> Paul, Paul also says this coup in, 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 I believe it's 2 Corinthians 13, 11. He says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, when I grew up, I put away childish things. The, the, the sanctification in my life Causes me to put away childish things. Yes, Thank you for asking. What's childish things, preacher? <laughs> Envy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Strife. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bad attitude. Mm -hmm. Jealousy. Yeah. Frustration. Yeah. Greed. Mm -hmm. 
being all over the place. God help me here. All right. So 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 I, I got to grow up. Now 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 God tells Moses, I've got to deal with you. Because you didn't sanctify me. You didn't go through the process I needed you to go through before the people. Now catch this elder. He says, because I'm still gracious, bro, I'm going to still let you see what I told you I was going to do. Wow. I just can't let you experience it because you didn't put enough weight on sanctifying yourself. Preacher, what does that mean? There are some things in life that God, because he's faithful, he will show us what he would have done. But sometimes we got to look at it from the outside. When I decide I'm not going to walk through my process, I'm not going to advance and grow. God says, well, there's no need for me to put you in this vehicle if you didn't take the time to learn how to drive in the hoop. That's good. You banging car doors now? Trust me, he ain't about to take you to another level in car. It's practical. If you can't care for the doors on a, 90, a 91 Ford, you're certainly not going to care for the doors on a 21 Ford. So he says, I, I can't progress you where I want to take you at times because you haven't walked through the process to get there. Now, he tells Moses, Moses, I'm going to allow you to see it, but... I can't let you walk in. I begin to think back. Vance Graham, now, now, now note this. This, this. this is for you preachers. Y'all y'all note this. Note this. Williamson, note this. Now, um, I said, well, God, even though he was wrong, okay, because he, he was disobedient, and Deacon's Black, catch this too. Uh, he, he was disobedient. Jenkins, catch this now. He, 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 elder, y'all catch this. Preachers, y'all make sure you listen to this. I said, now, God, I know he was wrong because, you know, he was supposed to speak to the rock. I said, but, but the people... We're kind of on his nerves. I, I was speaking to God as a pastor. <laughs> you catch that next one. I said, now, now, God, the people were on his nerves, though. And yeah, he was wrong with what he did, but, but don't you think that was a little harsh uh, to not let him walk into the place that you promised him 40 years ago? And, and God gave me two answers. The first, I'm going to give you the fun answer, and I'm going to give you the theological answer. The first thing he said was, he says, Hinton, just like you're teaching tonight, I can't let you take old ways into a new environment. He says, so I can't let Moses take an old habit into a new environment. Right. So, so wait, but here, here's a theological response. I said, well, God, where do we see that this was a habit? Mm -hmm. Oh, God, help me here. I said, because I see, I see this one instance that, that he messed up the last time. You told him to strike the rock. He struck the rock. He was obedient. You know, <laughs> uh, when, when the people were, were, were bothering him, he had to convince you. I'm talking to God like this. I said, he had to convince you not to kill them back in Exodus 33. Yeah. So what is the habit? Habit that I'm looking at. God says, well, go back to Exodus chapter 4. I said, okay. So, so I go to Exodus chapter 4, verses 21 through 26, and I find that God has told Moses at 80 years old, he says, Moses, I'm going to anoint you to be the one to take my people out of bondage and out of captivity. Moses starts giving God all these excuses. God, I can't talk. All these things. He, he's talking about deficiencies. And I said, well, God, maybe that's the habit. He said, no, they ain't the habit. Can't you just keep reading? So I'm reading. And he, he says, I, I got Aaron, your brother, that can come and walk with you and be your word, your words. You're going to be to him as God. He's going to speak on your behalf. So, okay, God, as he said, no, that's not it. So I began to continue to read. And I said, God, you got to help me to see where the habit was for Moses having a lack of sanctification in his life. And as I began to go towards the end of Moses' journey connected to Pharaoh, the Bible says in the fourth chapter of Exodus, he tells Moses, uh, Moses tells Pharaoh, listen, God's going to send a plague. He's going to kill all the firstborn sons because you refuse to let us go. Scripture says, as Moses left out of Pharaoh's presence, he went to the inn that they were lodged in, he and his wife. And the scripture says, now God just finished speaking through him, Evangelist Graham, to talk to Pharaoh. The scripture says in the 24th verse of Exodus chapter 4, God was getting ready to kill Moses. Now I said, hold on, hold on, hold on, God, hold on, hold on. You just used him to be your voice to Pharaoh. And in the next breath, you're going to kill him? He says, son, because he didn't go through his process of sanctification. What he was doing at 80, he was still doing at 120. I couldn't let him take that into the promise. I said, God, what did he do? He said, look at the text. I look at the text, and the scripture says, God is getting ready to kill Moses, but his wife shows up. Mm -hmm. Zephora. She shows up, and she circumcises their son in front of him, 
and throws the foreskin at Moses' feet. She says, you a bloody husband to me. You almost made me lose you and my son. Because God was going to kill you. Listen, to being willing, being too willing to spare the feelings of your son <coughs> instead of doing what God commanded you to do. Help me hear Jesus. He says, because you didn't want to go through the whining and the pain he would have to endure with circumcision. Mm -hmm. You felt like I could just do what I wanted to do and God would still bless me. She said, but had I not stepped in, mm -hmm. help me today, Jesus, I would have lost my husband and my son because you kept refusing to sanctify God. Preacher, what are you trying to tell me? As men, we have a responsibility. To do what God is calling us to do. Because if we don't, we kill us and our sons. That's good. His wife had to step in and make him get sanctified so God could use him. Go ahead, Moss. That goes back to what you said earlier about the other part of sanctification is standing. Oh, God. Because Moses, he was on the verge of not setting that standard so that not only his his son, but the men sons who were following him could have died also. So here's the weight of leadership, Jenkins, that when I'm going to be over people, I don't just mess up my own lineage. Mm -hmm. I mess up the lineage of those that will follow me. That's right. That's good. Now, I ain't saying this to get myself patted on the back, but you ought to be thankful you got a pastor. That recognizes the responsibility for your life. Yes, sir. That when I do wrong, help me today, Jesus, I release wrong to you. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of churches jacked up. That's why everybody in the church sleep with everybody white. Because it's originating at the head. Mm -hmm. And if the head doesn't set the standard right. and say, I don't care if this makes you bleed with what I'm getting ready to say. I don't care if you got to cry about what I'm getting ready to say. There will be a standard in this house. Yes, sir. Because I understand setting the standard in this house puts a standard in your house. Yes, God says to Moses, Moses, I spared you through the aid of your wife 40 years ago. Because you weren't willing to go through a process then. I gave you 40 years of grace to find where I was trying to get you to be 40 years ago. And when the opportunity came around again for you to show me you had learned from your last mistake, you resorted to old habits. Therefore, you're proving to me, Moses, that while you may be on your way to heaven, I can't give you your promise. <laughs> we, we, we can miss... First lady, our promise on our way to heaven. <laughs> Let that say, yes, deacon. None. You can't. You have to hold yourself to whatever standard you're trying to implement. Yes, sir. So again, parents, we can't have this thought of to the kids, do as I say, not as I do. Sir. Because if I was your kids, you know what? I would do what you do. You might beat me, that's okay. But why are you beating me, Mom and Dad? Remember, I got this from you. Yeah, put yourself over your lap. I'm trying to create insurrection. I'm just I'm just trying to release order. That if I'm not setting an example for the child to see. How can I expect the child to do what I have not showed them how to do? If you want the child to behave in school, do you behave at work? Well, we don't have nap time. Yeah, but you know you ain't supposed to be on social media while you're on that man's clock. Mm. So with the, what, the stuff you're doing at work that's wrong, your child will do at school that's wrong. So when you be in them, wonder where did they learn it from? They learned it from your undisciplined, lack of sanctified behaviors. When you let stuff go on in your house that don't belong in your house, it's going to translate into your children acting a fool in public. I'm letting you know that right now. I'm giving you a free answer without you having to look it up in the dictionary. Your child acts a nut in the public because you let too much go on in your house. If there's no order in the house, ain't going to be no order in the public. If there's no standard in the house, 
ain't gonna be no standing in the public. I was in the store about a month and a half ago because Deaconess Evans sent me out there. I don't know how that works. I'm supposed to be sending her out there, but she sends me out to the store, to Medicine Hills, and I'm the dummy for going. So I go and I'm in the store and I see this guy, Minister Williamson, and he's got a son. His son is probably two, you know. Um, yeah, he's probably too black. It looked about like it's a two-year-old. And so I'm coming in and I'm standing in line and the son is standing on top of the counter. So, so I look at the dad, the one where the source of discipline should come. I, I look at the dad and I say, uh, you gonna just let him stand on the counter, man? He said, uh, well, listen to this. That's the only way he's going to stay quiet. Oh. I said, you just told me everything about your house that I needed to know. You literally, your house is ransacked right now. I know it is. Yeah, your, your stuff is, all, you got toys in the refrigerator. You got everything happening in your crib because there's no order in your home. He said, that's the only way he's going to stay quiet. So, 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 so I, I, I'm looking at the son, and the son realizes, oh, he's going to let me do what I want to do. So what the son now does is he goes behind the cash register. Oh, While he's still on the counter now, now he's walking the counter behind the register. So it ain't but a lip he's standing on. So my nerves are getting a little off now. I just, Sir, I don't feel like praying tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I don't. Because he's going to bust his head open. His brain's going to be on the floor. I don't feel like I don't want to see that. I don't want to deal with that. Sir, you recognize he's now behind the register, sir. Oh, well, you know, but he's quiet. No, no, no. I, I want you to not say quiet to me no more the rest of the time. Because this boy's all over the place. And so I said, hey, man, come here for a minute. Because black, I couldn't allow no, this foolishness no, to continue it. to happen it. in front of my face. Yes, sir. So the little man starts walking over to me. Then he realizes I ain't gonna listen to you either. So he turns back around and he finds some scissors now. Mm. Oh, this is a real story. I'm, I'm, I'm lifting my hand to Jesus. It's a real story. He finds the scissors that's on the counter, and I said, "Sir, he here to pick scissors up." Well, he's quiet. What? <laughs> I said, "Look, man." We need to call the people on you. <laughs> For real. I mean, because this, this is horrible, man. You're all over the place. So the worker now decides, I got to intervene. So the worker goes, she moves the stuff. She pushes the, the, the register up so he can't walk behind. Her. She's making all these adjustments because his daddy can't control. Her. Preacher, what are you trying to tell me? Now, now that, that, that did end a little better because I left. I couldn't continue to see that. I just, my, my spirit wasn't right. And so, uh, but what, what, what are you teaching? Whenever I don't set a standard in private, mm -hmm. I'm going to create <laughs> chaos in public, catch this, that other people are going to try to correct. Oh, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I got to go. This is why, this is why policemen will never be out of a job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because mamas and daddies not policing at home. So, so now society has the police from the standard we didn't set behind closed doors. And right. we're just like Moses because we don't want to hurt their feelings. Right. I, I don't want to send him through the trauma of having to circumcise him. Circumcision, the cutting off of the foreskin, the cutting off from a sensitive area because I don't want to deal with the hard stuff. Because mm -hmm. mm. he's quiet. Because he's quiet. Go ahead. <laughs> working, because he's quiet. I, I don't want to go and disrupt the apple cart because he's quiet. But, but if I don't go do it, it forces society to have to do it for you. And they ain't going to do it the way you want it. Done. Yes, sir. So, so, so Moses had a problem, black, where he hadn't walked in sanctification for 40 years. On his way to heaven was called a man of God, yes, sir. was called a man after God's own heart, was a friend of God, a man that spoke to God face to face. Preacher, what are you trying to tell me? God is not pleased with your actions mm -hmm. just because he's using you. Right. Yeah. God used Moses for 40 years, but for 40 years there was a lack of sanctification. He's leading 2 million people unsanctified. 
He's leading people. He's praying for them. He's working miracles. He's parting the Red Sea. Water's coming out of the rock. Certainly God is pleased with him. God said there was a lack of sanctification. And I couldn't let him take that into a new land. So I'll raise up a Joshua. Well, I got to get out of here so I don't preach. He says, I'll raise up a Joshua that I know I can trust. A man that was sanctified even when his leader wasn't. Mm -hmm. A man that created an example when he didn't have an example to follow. Mm. So for every man out here that says, I can't be a good husband or a good father because my daddy was a deadbeat, mm -hmm. you're a liar. Yeah. The Holy Ghost in you yeah. can cause you to be an example even when you never saw it. Yes. Right. And I'm going to go and lay a lower on you. Sir. You're sitting in the church of an example now, yeah. sir. Yeah. So you get to throw away the I can't be because you're past the ears. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. He says that after the measure of Purification. Moses has to miss his promise shell. God let him see it from a distance, but couldn't let him walk in it because Moses still had some methods that he was using outside of what God desired for him to do. God will never let old methods or allow old methods to come into a new place. So I, I want you to remember that tonight when we talk about this series of sanctification. God will not allow old methods to operate in a new place. So when you get the new job, trust me, you ain't going to be able to operate in it the way you operate in the old one. Mm -hmm. When you get the new house, you ain't going to be able to flow in it the way you flowed in the other one. Because God is not going to allow old methods to come into a new place. Okay. Yes, sir. That's why we're new. We become sanctified. So that we can push this thing. I got to get out of here. I'm give, me, give me three minutes and I'm gone. The last thing I want to talk about is growth. Growth, 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 growth. Growth is simply the continuing in grace with the proper perspective. This is where sanctification kicks in. After I've made the changes to my life, I've stopped doing the things that I used to do. I've now allowed myself to operate in new methods and measures. Now he says I'm supposed to grow in them. Which gives me to understand that the process of sanctification is always ongoing. There, you can never be too sanctified. You'll always be becoming. 2 Peter 3 and 18 says this, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Peter says it very clearly. He says we've got to shall grow in grace. Grace, again, is not a covering for me to do wrong. Yes, sir. But grace is the preventative measure that causes me not to do wrong. Grace is what stops me. It's not, catch this, it's not grace that forgives me. It's grace that stops me. That was tweetable. It, it, it's not grace that forgives me. I, grace isn't the forgiveness measurement. Grace is the preventative measure. Grace stops me from cussing you out. Grace doesn't forgive me because I cussed you out. That's repentance. You will catch that next week. Grace is the thing that stops me. It puts reins on me. He says, you got in you the grace that you need. That's why he's called the God of all grace. Which means that in moments where I felt like I didn't have enough, bro, Butler, to not fight this person on my job for being in my business, grace comes in and prevents me from giving him a two-piece. Mm. <laughs> That's why Paul says, my grace is sufficient for thee. That's why my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Yes, You're going to be tried. While I'm being sanctified, there are going to be challenges. There are going to be steps that's going to want to block me. He says, but here comes grace mm -hmm. to prevent you from falling. Amen. Grace ain't forgiving you for falling. That's repentance. Grace stops me from falling. He says, so we got to learn how to grow in grace. How do I grow in grace? By keeping his word before me. Yeah. The Bible says in, in Proverbs 30 and 5, he says, for the word of God is pure. Mm. Yeah, he said it's a shield to them that put their trust in him. Mm. Psalm 12 and 6 says, every word of the Lord, the words of the Lord are pure words. As of as of as silver purified in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. He says that his grace, his grace. is pure. His words are pure. That's why the scripture tells us in Psalm 119, verse 11, he says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I need his word yes. to be operable yes. in my life. Mm -hmm. 
Psalm 119, 133. He says, order my steps in thy word and let me not fall into any type of perverseness. He says, prevent me from falling into iniquity when I'm keeping your word before me. His word, Psalm 119, 105, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. That's what his word does. We're purified, we're strengthened by his word. So preacher, how do I continue my process of sanctification? Keep his word before you. Nothing wrong with prophetic word, but you got to keep the writ before you. Yes, sir. You, you got to keep it is written mm -hmm. before you. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus didn't talk to the devil with a prophetic yes, word, sir. even though he was the spirit of prophecy. Mm. He came to the devil with what was written. He came, the word, who was the spirit of prophecy, spoke the word to the issue. Because he recognized prophecy ain't going to fix this. I can come to the altar, pastor can give me, literally download it, what the Holy Ghost said with crystal clear clarity and conviction, a lot of seeds. Pastor can give me all of that, be right on point, but when the devil comes to try me, I can't go back to pastor's word. That's right. I got to go back to it's written. That's right. Well, preacher, what's the point of prophecy? Because prophecy comes to encourage you that what's written is true. That's right. That's good. That's good. Paul told Timothy, he says, listen. I give prophetic word. 1 Timothy 1.18, I give prophetic word to help you fight and to remain encouraged in the battle. You receive prophecy, not for you to tell this to the devil. You receive prophecy to tell it to yourself. You tell the devil what is written. You remind yourself of what was said. There's a lot of good nuggets tonight. Black. Boy, I feel like they're just popping all out of me. Yeah. So, so, so the reality is, it's my responsibility to have this word hid in my heart in such a way that when the challenges to my sanctification come, I can speak the word back to it. It's like Coop did tonight. She said, Pastor, I might not know exactly where it is, but this is what it says. At least know what it says. Mm -hmm. Then find out where it is. Uh, yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Right. yes, sir. Yes, sir. So he told, he, he tell us tonight that he's made us to be sanctified. Mm -hmm. The enablement to do right is already inside of us. The purification the process that we yield to, to let him do his work, and then growth. We talked about that a little bit on Sunday, about when we get planted, when we consider the lily. When that lily is planted, it starts to grow, and that's what God is expecting from us in this season of ministry. As we head into year four, he's expecting growth, yeah. not just from the numerical standpoint of bodies coming to the seats, but he's talking about growth from the spiritual mm -hmm. standpoint of me starting to handle situations differently now. Mm -hmm. I can't resort to my old way of handling things. Let me, this is a word, and I'm going on this. Fighting is not always the answer. Amen. God help me today. That was the old me, y'all. Yeah. That, that was the before Christ, the BC me, that I'll fight you and punch in your face. But, but if, if I'm saved, and I'm walking in sanctification, I can't resort to punching you in your face. That's right. I'm talking to somebody. I ain't asking who it is because I know you're here. I can't resort to cussing you out. I can't resort to throwing a pot and a pan at you. I can't resort to talking about your mama no more. Help me, Jesus. I can't resort to the bottle no more. I can't resort to the weed man no more. I can't become the weed man either. Oh, man. Sanctification yes, sir. means I'm supposed to look different. That's right, that's right. And if I was that, mm -hmm. certainly I'm not supposed to be that. Yes, sir. Yes, Kim yes, Juan, I want you to hear me. If I was that, yeah. I ain't supposed to be that. Well, man, money, money tight. I need to figure out how to make a few dollars. Let me, <coughs> let me just go sell a dime bag real quick. It ain't worth it. That's right. The new you ought to forget how to sell drugs. Mm. Kanye, you shouldn't even remember the corners no more. Mm. Amen, Kanye. God bless your wonderful heart for a testament in the house. I shouldn't remember my transaction stance. I made sure I ain't ride over 13 miles an hour when I was scoping the block because I wanted to make sure, you know, I saw where my people was at. <laughs> you can't resort to old tactics when I'm walking in sanctification. 
Bro, Joseph, I got to make noticeable strides for improvement. That if I used to be a smoker, I ain't going to smoke no more. Help me, Holy Ghost. If I was smoking three packs a day and I'm getting sanctified, at least let me smoke one. Y'all catch that next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, we'll, we'll, they'll, 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 they'll catch that. It's process, preacher. You got to be moving towards it. Not, I'm a three-pack smoker. I'm going to be like this for the rest of my life. You ain't saved. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. uh-oh. Because salvation tells me I have to shift something about what I used to do. I know I'm teaching Bible, and I'm teaching the truth. I got to shift. Yes, Sister Cooper. I don't think that's good, like how you were saying that the sanctification is still a process. Because I was just on the way, I was on my way home, and then on the way here, some lady, she uh, was just driving recklessly and like just pulled out like she was about to jump out and then drove slowly. So I almost hit her from yeah. 50 and 45. Yeah. Instead of cursing at her and putting the window down like I used to, I yeah. live on the horse. Right. But process. <laughs> process. Right. Yeah. So it's just like, but I, I saw myself, I was like, okay, so you still got work to do. Right. Yes. Right. I'm sure. But um, I just like on the morning. Just kept it yeah. Like, mm, not right. <laughs> process go coop. Y'all clap for coop. Yeah. Process. <laughs> That's all we teach you. And then process. you know it might not be the next time, but the time after that, you ain't even gonna lay on the horn. Right. Now you gonna probably shoot her a look. Right. Yeah. yeah. Wait. Right. Process. Right. Hallelujah. Right. I'm, I'm progressively mm-hmm. getting better. That's all God is looking That's for. It. Are you progressively getting better or are you just content being yes, evil? That's right. Wow. Yeah. I just, you just content being evil. I just want to be evil today. I woke up and I want to just slap yeah. somebody. Yeah. Where the Holy Ghost in that? I woke up and I, mm, I just don't like you. Mm. Well, good morning. I mean, <laughs> What are we doing? There has to be an adjustment. It's got to be something different when we're walking out sanctification. We can't be the same that we used to be, y'all, if we really say. Got to push toward better. That's all your pastor is trying to get across to you tonight. Push toward better. And I'm going to repeat what I said when I started. If I keep looking in your spirit... And I don't see you making no steps toward sanctification. I don't see no steps toward process. I'm going to just tap you on your shoulder. Now we will need you to usher today. Thank you. I love you. We'll see you in a couple of months. Amen. That's just where I'm at, Black. Yes, sir. We yes, going to be that church. I'm be. not going to be the pastor. There is one. There no folks one. out here slipping, <laughs> dipping, and doing whatever else they're doing. And then stand up in this church and serve? No. you there got is. to be kidding me. I might well go back to Virginia. They'll take me back at the credit union if I ask them for my job. Been gone how how many years? How many, four, five, how many years? Four years been gone? But black, what are we doing? We better get an Evans testimony. Yes, sir. Not I'm gonna just go ahead and ride it out because I already got my plane ticket. So I'm gonna just close my eyes while they're doing it. No. Sanctification says. I ain't going to be in the room. Right. Y'all can act as dumb as you want to. Not on my watch. I don't want my phone to accidentally call my pastor while I'm in here. And I can't explain my way out of this. Right. I can't say, Pastor, I ain't no. And, uh, yeah, you're lying. Second hand sin. You catching the you catching the hangover of it. Oh God, you walked in, walked out higher than them. <laughs> we got to realize God takes sanctification seriously. We talked about, and I'm closing on this riff. We talked about a man, Moses, tonight, who was blessed of God, a man that had personal relationship with God, spoke to God face to face, but for 40 years walked without being sanctified. God still grant him heaven. I know when we get to heaven, you're going to see Moses there. Without a question, Moses there waiting for us. See, we can all crown Jesus together. But there was something he missed in the earth because he didn't yield to the process of sanctification. God still let him lead. He still had one of the biggest churches on record. World renowned pastor, but yet wasn't sanctified. That's why God had to keep him in the Old Testament. Because I can't take, 
old. I can't take old issues into a new place. Yeah. yeah. God. So, so, oh God. Like, so, so I'm going on this. Even when he made an appearance in the New Testament, God didn't let him speak. Go, go read when you get a chance when Jesus on the Mount Transfiguration in Matthew the 17th chapter. And Peter notices that Elijah and Moses are there and they're strengthening Jesus. So I really can't do too much talking to you, Jesus, because I still got some old stuff that I can't carry into a new vessel. So God gave me a sneak peek and even let me trespass in the New Testament. But he can't let me talk while I'm here. <laughs> Grace led me back, but I got to still keep my mouth closed till I get sanctified. All right, so I'm done. Come on, clap for Jesus. Thank you for tuning in to today's message. We pray that something was shared that would help you along your Christian journey. We realize that not everyone will be able to make it into the house of God here, but we do know the importance of expanding the kingdom beyond the walls. And so we understanding that not everyone is connected to the body of Christ. We're asking today that if you desire just to let Jesus in your heart, pray this simple prayer with me. Say, Jesus, please forgive me. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead just for me. If you pray that simple prayer, you're now a part of the kingdom of God. We also understand that there are those of us who have given our hearts to Jesus in the past, but find ourselves in a backslidden condition. The Bible teaches us that God himself is married to the backslider. And because he's married to us, he's always welcoming us back with open arms. Pray this simple prayer with me today. Lord, please forgive me for any sin that I may have committed. Renew me, restore me, bring me back into right relationship with you. In Jesus name. Amen. If you pray that simple prayer, you've just been restored. We understand that it is important to chronicle our spiritual journey. So we would ask if you would, please just leave us a message. Let us know of the spiritual decision you made today that we can keep you in prayer and walk with you along your path. We thank God for you. We love you. And until next time, be blessed.